Olympians in Sochi need athletic ability and training, but to win, they also need the latest technology. This month, Popular Science takes a look at what is being done to engineer the ideal Olympian. Articles editor Jenny Bogo is here to tell us all about it. Good morning, Jenny. Good morning. I always learn. I always love learning what they're doing behind the scenes. So let's start off with the skeleton, because every year this is the most terrifying one to me. They're going down that what looks like a hill at 80 miles an hour. Yes. How are they making it safer for these athletes or making it a better performance for them? Well, as you said, they're hurtling down an ice track and there's no steering system other than their bodies. So the engineers really had to make that sled as responsive as possible. In order to do that, they needed to make it stiff in some direction and flexible in other directions, and that's a real engineering challenge when you're using metal. This year they also made the sled from a high-performance alloy, which makes it super strong. Um, and they actually took the saddle, which is the part that the athlete lays on as they're going down the hill, and custom molded it for their individual bodies. That way when they sort of gently nudge the sled in one way or another, the sled can respond. It, I mean, looking at that sled, because I mean, we had it physically here in the studio before, it looks like almost nothing. I mean, there's... Yes. The, I've heard athletes say that their, their bodies really are the sled. They're, they're controlling everything through the way they sort of nudge their shoulder or their knee as they're hurtling down that ice track at 80 miles per hour. They're not the only ones. The, the skeleton's not the only one who got some technical help here. The U.S. bobsled team after the 2010 Olympics actually went to BMW, didn't they, to get help? What, did, what happened there? They did, and BMW approached the bobsled like a race car. So they replaced the fiberglass shell with carbon fiber. They made it more aerodynamic. They they redistributed the weight in order to lower the center of gravity. And in the sport of bobsled, once you push off, you can't accelerate or break. In order to maintain speed, it's all about the steering system. So BMW really spent a lot of time adjusting the steering system to personalize it to each pilot and make it as responsive as possible. It's great branding for BMW, too. You have a global audience looking at this. Let's talk a little bit about the ski suit that the men will be using in the freestyle race, because it was fascinating to hear that this is like shark skin. Um, it is. The, uh, the, the mogul's ski suit is actually, um, it's judged based on how fluid your body looks. And so you, you really want your knees to appear to be together. And so the, the mogul suit, um, this year Columbia made it with a snow camouflage that actually kind of blends into the course. So, um, so, so it looks just very like smooth. There's also the, uh, a downhill ski suit, which is, which is different, quite different actually. Yes. So the downhill ski suit is judged completely differently. That's based on how fast you look. This ski suit was made by Spider, and they put it through hundreds of wind tunnel tests in order to make sure the fabric was incredibly aerodynamic. That actually is made of a material that's sort of like shark skin in order to manipulate the airflow. They also, which I thought was really cool, sent skiers down the mountain at Sochi on the course with instruments to measure drag in order mm -hmm. to figure out exactly what points of the course had the most drag. And then they placed their seams and their zippers in such a place that it's extra aerodynamic. We well. have one prop here on set with us that looks very cool. This is the helmet. And yes. this helmet is going to be used by snowboarders and members of the ice hockey team. What's different about it? So um, this helmet actually, if, if you look inside, it has a, a special head padding that reduces impact to athletes in case they actually fall on the ice or the snow. In the Winter Olympics, they're dealing with such high speeds and such hard surfaces that concussions can be a real problem. Right. This is a padding called Solo. It's actually a consumer product. So you buy it and you is can that just, the, Is this it here? That's it. Yeah. You can just buy it and insert it in commercial helmets. Ryan Miller, who's one of the U.S. goalies, is actually using it in his helmet this year. There are some snowboarders who are using it. Um, and as you may have heard, there's actually already a concussion on one of the snowboarding courses. So anything that can um, help make your head safer will really keep the athletes focused on the course and not on injuries. And the, all of this new technology is really important because, I mean, particularly in, in when you're talking about bobsledding or skiing, you're talking about hundredths of a second sometimes that separate people. It's true. This technology, they spend so much time behind the scenes tweaking everything to make it work as safely and as um, smart as possible. And it, at the end of the day, it might shave a few hundred seconds off their time. But in the Olympics, a few hundredths of a second can make the difference between winning a medal and, and not. You mentioned time. I want to talk about the data recorder the U.S. snowboarding team has been using because they have this in training and they'll be using it in competition, too. It's true. They used a data recorder um, in training in order to see exactly what, um, what their bodies are doing at every position of the trick. So when, when they're in the, the half pipe, they can measure their velocity, they can see their body angle, um, they can actually then use that information to adjust themselves to make them as fast as possible. In snowboarding, they really want to go big when they're doing their tricks, and going big is all about speed. 
Wow. And, and, and I can imagine they get an awful lot of information out of that. The, the device actually takes measurements every tenth of a second, so wow. they have a ton of information to work with. All right. Jennifer Bogo, thanks so much. Really interesting stuff. Thanks.